Welcome back to the channel guys and there is a new 7th series. The 7th generation is finally here and it's a big deal both in technology but more importantly to me in design and I have a lot to say about this design and we're gonna have a detailed look at it from the front side and rear obviously in addition to maybe making some small changes and minor tweaks to the front end in the redesign. I can't wait to get into that but first let's talk about some of the spec and tech of the new 7 series. Let's start on the inside where there are some huge changes compared to the old generation 7 series. There is a digital dashboard which houses two 12.3 inch displays in a single glass panel for both the infotainment system screen and the gauge cluster and in the back seat though you can now get something called BMW theater screen and this this is a massive 31 inch screen that folds down from the ceiling where passengers can watch movies or play games one game I'd love to try on this specific screen is Raid Shadow Legends which is the sponsor of today's video it's now been three years since Raid Shadow Legends took over the mobile gaming scene. Raid is available on both mobile and PC. I'm a huge fan of the concept art in the game. You get a lot of inspiration from the limitless world of game and character design. And if I were to rank my top three characters in this game, number one would have to go to the colorful design of Roxam. Roxam is a legendary champion and the perfect assassin. He's good for fighting bosses and his Veil buff skills makes him very hard to target during battles. Number two goes to the elegant Battle Sage. She's one of the only champions with AoE attack as a default skill, perfect for fighting spiderlings in the spider's den. Third place has to go to Classy Bellanor, the perfect leader of a team and great choice for fighting against clan boss and spider. This month, Raid is celebrating its third year anniversary and that means free gifts for everyone. They're also adding content such as new champions, artifact sets, tournaments, and events so now is the time you really want to join use my link or scan the QR code right here on the screen new players will get a starter pack worth almost $40 with free champions 10 magic XP brew 10 force XP brew and 10 spirit XP brew new and existing players can get a bunch of free birthday gifts worth over $25 and I made it really easy for you once you're in game just enter promo code three years raid to get your hands on everything so just scan the QR code right here on the screen or click Click the link down in the description to get started. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legend for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the redesign. So the 2023 BMW 7 Series will come in three versions to begin with a six cylinder 740i and the V8 powered 760i models with a plug-in hybrid called 750e coming a little later. BMW also says there will be an M badge 7 Series, not a full M7, which is unfortunate, but still cool that they decide to do an M badge 7 series that's gonna come somewhere sometime in the future with 600 horsepower and last but not least obviously there is also the electric i7 and the i7 features two electric motors with 536 horsepower and around 300 miles of range which is pretty standard these days and BMW says that they can get 80 miles of range from just 10 minutes of charging and buyers will also receive complimentary charging for the first three years of ownership at Electrify America stations which I think is not bad the base model is the classic 740i I love that they still have that nameplate for the 7 series it comes with a 375 horsepower turbocharged 3 liter inline 6 and rear wheel drive the 4.4 liter twin turbo v8 in the new 760i produces 536 horsepower and only comes with the x drive all-wheel drive the coming 750e plug-in hybrid will make 483 horsepower so there's a, a wide range of um, engine choices to choose from here for the new 7 series and it will go on sale in the US this November with the base price of $94,000 for the 740i and $115,000 for the 760i xDrive with the i7 coming in at $120,000. But now, with the spec and tech done, let's jump into Photoshop and let's have a look at this design because having a look at this i7 here I'm gonna have a look uh, show you the i7 and compare it to the internal combustion engines and when I first saw these on in the uh, spy photos with all the camo and the front end you saw some uh, split lighting in the front end and the grill it, I didn't have high hopes for the outcome of the 7 series but looking at it now 
I'm surprised to say that this looks really good in my opinion. And the reason being is we now have the front graphics of this BMW 7 series. It's a graphics that's kind of been marinated for some time and I'm starting to get used to it and it feels like BMW are starting to find their uh, styling with these graphic features that are the big grille obviously and then we have this split headlight that we have seen now on a few BMWs with the styling part being the top part. So this little piece right here houses the DNA of BMW and it's all about styling and it's made with some crystals in there to create this really strong DNA when you look at it. Uh, specifically at night obviously and then we need to have some function in the headlight obviously too we need to have a proper headlight and that unit sits below in this piece down here so this is the the normal headlight that is actually gonna light up the road ahead of you and I think these two in this case work pretty well with each other it doesn't have any it doesn't feel like there there are two separate geometries or features that is slapped on the face maybe a little bit in the angles of them but that's what we're gonna have some fun in in the redesign later in the video and ex experiment with that I also saw the outline of this grill at a on it from a teaser image and I really didn't like that they had uh, the, the top if we split this in half we have the top part right here and the lower part right here they are almost like a, a symmetrical mirror of each other and it creates a very static design and I kind of feel that is still here in the production version when I see it without the camo but it still looks better than I expected a lot better and then we have this framing of the front end as well we have this nice framing in the bottom going up on the side and houses all the key graphic features specifically in the lower half of the front end but what really took me by surprise is when I pop in the internal combustion engine version of the 7 series right here and just look at this thing this looks so cool! I love the design of this uh, 7 Series, specifically when we have the blacked out front end, like we have, I think this is the 760, it has to be, and then we have the M brake calipers peeking out right there. It looks really, really nice, and I like how the front end is different here from the front end that we have on the i7. The i7 looks a little tame to me, it doesn't have that aggressive BMW uh, it's not a, it's not just aggressive BMW. It's a confident front end. BMW needs to look super confident in the face of the car, and I think that's lacking a little bit in the i7. But looking at the 760i, boom! It comes back with a bang, and I love how these wings stick up right here and creates more dynamic angles in the front end than we have on the i7 and also of course when we have it in the black trim it looks fantastic but it has to be in this black satin in color and of course with the blacked out trims because this totally changes the entire feeling vibe of what the 7 series is in my opinion and it feels like BMW with this 7 series they're trying to mix their new DNA with some old DNA as well that's been with BMW for half a century not like with the iX where they just ditched every single piece of uh, brand identity and created something completely weird and new here we even have the Hofmeister kink back in the in the car right here typical BMW and super important at least for me when we look at this in a side view which we're gonna do in in just a second and then you have some nice line flow also I'm gonna look at that in a side view for example this graphic going into the into the lower part of the rocker of the of the car into the bumper and then this continues into this little wing in the front end to me it's it's just a beautiful looking sedan beautiful looking flagship of BMW that is worthy of having that a title attached to it. Before we go in and look at the side, I just want to show you quickly the redesign that I did a, I can't remember, a few, um, couple of months ago maybe for the 7 series and I wanted to have some angles right here in the front end as you can see. I took the front end of the uh, XM, I think this outline of the grille looks better than these static, as I said, symmetrical style of the grille. I would love to have more of a di uh, direction and more wider grills in the front and maybe squished a little bit with some part, the top part in this case, being wider than the lower part, creating a nice dynamic front end. But 
I'm really happy with what BMW did with this design right here in the new 7 series. And let's have a look at the side view comparing the uh, i7 to the internal combustion version. We, as I said, I want to talk about uh, some line flow here. So we have line flow both in the i7, which with this line right here, these lines to me are crucial for a flagship sedan. And what I love in, in addition to this with the new 7 series is that they kept the typical standard traditional proportions of a sedan. It's not trying to be one of these sport back cars which stretches the, 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 the roof line all the way back here and never really comes back up. This has a clear three box Def defined shape of a sedan with the boxes the number one being the hood and the engine and number two being right here the greenhouse and number three being the the trunk and i don't know to me it just looks really good i really want to hear your opinions of the 7 series both the i7 and the internal combustion engines are you pleasantly surprised or is this exactly what you thought it would be? To me, as I said, I'm super surprised by how this turned out comparing it to the camo images. This looks like a completely different car to me, specifically in the front end and more importantly with this blacked out trim that makes it look like a proper 7 series confident flagship BMW. Let's have a look at the rear view here before we jump into the redesign. So same thing here, the i7, it looks good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it in the rear. The rear, of course, have more of a uh, normal design than the front end with the kidneys, the BMW and the split headlights. But this looks really good in my opinion because we have a very stately approach and that means we have a lot of horizontal lines that are not broken up by any graphics or any curvatures in the lines. And this, this creates this architectural design that we're looking for in a flagship model. And looking at the 760i down here with the exhaust, this is, I think, what is missing on the i7 and that what is needed on the i7 to kind of plant it better than we have right here because we have the body colored all the way from this point all the way to this point and it creates sort of a, a, a little bit too high of a visual uh, approach to the rear and it looks a little too high. It needs something down here to break up the, the, the body colored panels and that's what the 760i does so well with these uh, big diffusers and then you have the exhaust pipes down here at the bottom. Super cool design and uh, as I said again, this looks great in black with the red taillights and you have the shoulder line cutting right into the corner of the taillight. Why is things, details like that that I love and they also added a little M spoiler here, typical BMW. Going back to the E46 M3 and the M5 from the same era. I love those little spoilers that they put on the on the trunk. It's just details like that that makes the car, the M spec, stand out more compared to the regular versions. All right, so let's have a look at the redesign in the front end. I'm gonna focus on the front end here. There are just some minor changes that I wanna do to it, nothing major. And I'm really not sure if it actually needs a redesign in this case, but I just wanna throw that in there to kind of experiment with reducing the height of the front end. And that means reducing the, the major key graphics of the front end, such as the, the kidneys, and also maybe make the, the, the two split headlights or the, the, the styling light and the headlight itself, maybe have them be a little closer to each other and more in line with the top part of the grille. I'm not really sure if I prefer the redesign in this case, specifically, as I've said a lot in this video, but specifically talking about the blacked out 760i, I think everything about that front end is coming together really nicely. And when you have a black, color across everything on the car, the, the grill, the, the, the housings and the trim pieces and also of course the body color of the car. When you have one unified color across it, you're going to appreciate the proportions more of the car and I think that what makes the, the, the 760i in this uh, specific trim, like I showed you, the black one, I think that's what makes it so special to me because it's going back to the, the sedan proportions that, that it feels like we're moving away from. Everything is trying to be a sport back or a coupe SUV or whatever. We don't really have these stately sedans from the big German companies anymore. And I'm really glad that BMW decided to, to go that route in this case and also to keep the big kidneys and work, try to figure out how the graphics that they try, they're implementing now with the split headlights and the kidneys, how they can actually work 
in combination with the proportions of a sedan and I think this works a lot better than for example in the new X7 which has a similar approach to its front end but it just to me it just feels like it suits a sedan a lot better this new design DNA front fascia of BMW to apply that onto the proportions of a sedan. So to sum it up, this BMW is going to be, in my case, the bossiest of the, uh, the three big German uh, sedans flagship. You have the Audi A8, the S8, and then you have the Mercedes S-Class, and now you have the new BMW 7 Series. And honestly, I would buy this 7 Series over the Audi and the Mercedes but it needs to be in one color and it needs to be may, maybe not necessarily the satin black but i want to have it in a dark maybe charcoal color with the blacked out trim that would look really cool as well i'm not a, a huge fan of the i7 because of the trim pieces and the less confident looking rear and front end but overall very good job by bmw and i honestly can't wait to see these crews down right right here in the fort lauderdale in miami because i guess i'm sure we're gonna have a lot of them here and i can't wait to see them out on the street